So I've tried to recreate um, the simulation compared to a real life walker as much as I possibly can. Um, it has, it, this walker moves with uh, four servo joints. Um, so each of these legs here actually has a servo script um, attached to it that I wrote. It's a very simple servo script uh, with a very simple solution to the PID controls that real life servos use. Um, and it works fairly decently if you compare it to how the real life server works on, on the walker. Um, uh, it even it takes into account things like delay times. So there's I mean, mainly there's two different delays um, that a servo has in real life, which is the actual delay that I've added into the Arduino file, um, which basically makes sure that there's enough time for the joint to move to its designated angle um, without having loss of precision. So, you know, the, the brain thinks that, you know, oh, the creature has moved to, ha you know, this joint has moved to angle 25, but in real life, it's actually at angle 20, right? So there's a difference of degree five. Um, and that can, you know, really mess up the simulation. So, and in the second um, uh, delay type, is the actual communication with, with the Bluetooth on the computer. So that delay has been taken into account here. Um, and it works fairly well. So now what's the, how is this better compared to training it in real life? Well, I can easily just decide to delete this joint here. And you know, the brain has to learn to get a new fitness score by, by basically not having the joint to be able to control. I can shorten a joint, I can do a whole bunch of things. First of all, I can train a creature, you know, with an army of other creatures that are also trying to maximize their fitness. So this, the, so the training time is basically reduced to practically be insignificant with, with, versus me having to train it in real life. Um, there were some amazing solutions that people gave of having a, a ropes attached to uh, some kind of a pulley system which resets the, the creature and then you know that way I can have a camera that looks at the creature but obviously that would have been a lot more work so this is the easier route and I think it's a pretty decent route um, so uh, these boxes that you see here are actually just the output um, they're just it's just there for debug purpose but you'll see them blinking as the legs or the joints are moving so let me go to the army of walkers here. So each of these walkers has their own, has, has its own little brain that's controlling it. Um, so it's a very simple um, process of eliminating. Uh, basically, I just take the best brain that's moved the furthest and I, and I copy it over five times. So these uh, five creatures here are perfect whoops these five uh, that means they have the exact same brain that's not mutated of the best creature in the last generation and then everybody else gets a little bit of a mutated brain and it's the testing process starts again and over time we get a brain that's able to walk pretty far um, so it's obviously that's not very complicated I could have done things like species um, so what's the point of doing that you know when I just want one brain that that works you can kind of see the boxes are kind of blinking now that's just the brains outputs and the decision process of the creature on which joint to move uh, in which way so you'll actually see what I meant by these so this is the first generation so everybody has a different brain but once this generation finishes these five creatures will have the same brain and everybody else's brain will be mutated based on the best creature which it looks like might be this guy or one of the three creatures in the background but we'll see what the heck um that's not right clearly Some of these guys are flipped upside down. I am not sure what just happened.
This guy's about to have a very high fitness. Just because he got flipped over here. <laughs> I'm not sure what just happened, to be honest. Okay, it's happening again. Why is it doing that? Okay, I'm going to have to check the code and make sure. I'm, I'm on, honestly have no idea why they're flipping. The way I was uh, spawning them previously for each generation was a little bit offset in the Z direction. Uh, Unity is kind of weird where if you are deleting one game object on the same tick as you spawn another game object, the game object that you have just tried to destroy is actually not deleted yet. So it clashes with the game object that you just spawned, and if they both have physics and it colliders, they kind of just go flying and flipping around. So to fix that, um, I just I just literally have this little bit of code to add, where I just make the collider for the actual body, the red part, false, and I make each of the servo joints, um, their colliders false also. So now, now since the colliders are false, even though I'm deleting and, and adding the creatures on the same tick they shouldn't go uh, flying around all right so running the simulation again um, it's running at five times speed and each um, uh, test time is about uh, 50 seconds so it's lasting about roughly um, 10 seconds each so you can kind of see these uh, five creatures have the same brain so the reason I went with five creatures is because I was I previously only had it to one creature, but for whatever reason the fitness was just suddenly dropping and I didn't I don't quite understand why. I think there might be some bug that I haven't exactly fixed yet. So I just thought I might as well just give it five creatures and I just increased the total population to be a little bit higher. I think the current total population is about forty creatures. Um yeah, so you can kind of see they're slowly learning to walk. They're moving further and further each time. I'm fairly sure that this leg will never get any better. Um, simply because it's just the same creature's brain that's just mutating. Okay, I just saw them, something's flipping again. I'm not sure why. Well, that's never going to get fixed, to be honest. So once I think that they've moved decently far and I kind of like the way they move and or, or whatever reasons I just basically press the yes button and it saves a brain file that I can then take and export into my uh, the program that I wrote in Java that connects to the Bluetooth um, and controls the creature in real life uh, so I've also made just a very simple addition to the um, the Java file where the, the where I was previously doing the training process. It's just a simple variable use loaded brain, um, and if it's true, it loads the brain uh, into a recurrent neural network. Um, and basically anywhere where it's doing the running process of actually doing feed forward, uh, it basically just uses this uh, recurrent neural network brain. So it's pretty simple. So this was one of the brain that was previously trained, and it, and because of that variable that I made true, uh, it's now loaded. And you can kind of see the recurrent neural network format of the LMAN, LMAN neural network. Um, previously, in the previous video that I made to this, there were just the top black part and the purple part. The purple part are the recurrent connections that are connecting back from the output layer. But with an LMAN neural network, each hidden layer also gets um, connect gets uh, looped back so this uh, hidden layer here is looped back to here this hidden layer here is looped back here and then this final hidden layer is looped back here okay um, so this is just your normal L manual network format and I'm just gonna click test uh, currently it's in debug mode so it's it's running but it's not connect it's uh, there's no re receive okay or sent data packets because you know it's not communicating with the Bluetooth at the moment it's just running um, without that so it's kind of just simulating it um, so well I mean this this neural network particularly here I just kind of just saved really quickly just to just to, just to show you guys but um, it's kind of it probably would be pretty pretty bad if I tested this neural network and I'm gonna actually showcase one of the neural networks that I've uh, already trained in the simulation uh, and I'm gonna show you guys that neural network 
uh, controlling the the walker in real life. So I most likely will not be able to show it because I think my Arduino, um, the main chip that's on the Arduino controlling chip has gone bad. Um, <clears throat> it was working fine this morning, but I made some addition to this file and I tried uploading this afternoon and it basically kept giving me this error, which I thought was kind of simple. I'd solve it sometime later, but after trying to upload again and looking online what this error actually means, I want the, it basically just means the controlling the main controller chip that's on the Arduino um, needs to be bootloaded again or I might need to buy a completely new Arduino I'm not sure um, I might try to bootload with my friends Arduino I'm not sure if that's even possible or I might try to buy the chip which is actually kinda cheap I checked it like around five dollars and I might try to bootload off that or I have to buy a completely new Arduino this is a completely terrible time for my Arduino to just die on me um, but just trust me that it was working um, this morning and it was actually pretty cool watching it um, move with a brain that I had just trained. I'll definitely make a video, a follow-up video, where I have a new Arduino or I have an Arduino that's bootloaded and it's working and I'll definitely be showcasing it. Um, but So really sorry about that. Um, anyways. Just thanks for watching for now, but I'll definitely make a follow-up video on this. So once again, I apologize. I'll definitely be making a follow-up video to um, to this and showing the walker uh, moving in real life with a trained brain. Um, another thing that I'm thinking about doing is actually making this um, simulation here more accessible for you guys. So some way of uh, some some way you guys can see the creatures train, and maybe you know I'll allow a way for you guys to edit your creatures and, and delete joints and then see you know how it gets trained then which will be kind of a cool little addition to have you know and you know since that's kind of the way where I think I want to take my channel to you know things where I make something but then everybody else who's watching the video can go around and play with it too um anyways so that's so it's just a bummer that I couldn't show this in action in real life Anyways, thanks for watching, and look out for the follow-up to this video where, I mean, I actually have a working Arduino.